This presentation looks at using Aviva Engineering for other opportunities. The presentation itself is going to look at weight management, but I'd like to highlight it as an opportunity to innovate use of the software in many other applications. We have quite a lot of possibilities out there, and these are a few examples of what our customers are already doing with the software. We have, for example, a customer using Aviva Engineering as an alternative front end to the catalogue information, using the simple table interface to populate data into the catalogue without needing to use the Paragon application. Another customer is using Aviva Engineering to build fabrication package information. The information they need is very similar to assembly planning, but assembly planning can only capture items that are defined in 3D, and they want to capture other items, perhaps customized items that they can define themselves and build a rich data set for their own needs. Now two rather more extreme examples, we have a customer that wants to use um, a solution for managing the life cycle of their street furniture, their signs, their traffic lights for example, and they weren't necessarily driven their, their desire wasn't necessarily driven by the, the table interface, but the background database, the Dabacon system, and the use of global gives them a really powerful solution for sharing and communicating information around their business. A rather unusual solution is the use of Viva Engineering for evacuation. With the uh, nuclear new build project in the UK, a customer is using uh, the Aviva Engineering to capture and calculate the evacuation times from the building. And unlike a typical evacuation scenario, because the site is being constructed, then during different periods of the project, the, uh, the evacuation routes will change. And they're using Aviva Engineering to manage that change and keep everybody informed about how to leave if there's an accident. So why use Aviva Engineering? Where is its power? Well, firstly, it has a nice, simple to use table interface, and anybody who's used a simple spreadsheet program will be able to work with Viva Engineering in a very short period of time. It uses the same mechanisms, the same uh, interactions as, as all the other tools out there. And that table is an interface onto a powerful database. The Dabacon system is capable of tracking a lot of information. It's capable of capturing the history as things change and backed by the global it will be able to put this data in many different locations around the world you can share it between all the people in your office or perhaps put that in an office on the other side of the world and share the data with them so what you have is a rather than have a lot of different spreadsheets that you might be sending through the email you have a single single data source that everybody can work with now in terms of looking at customization, the database system beyond what we create um, in our, for our, our own applications, you can go and create your own data sets, your own database schemas. It has as much power as traditional relational databases um, and can do much more in that respect as well. But I think the real power comes is when you connect this up to your business processes. This is when you can really adapt the system to capture the information that you need in your project and allow you to represent the processes to make sure that you're getting the information to the right people and to make sure that people have the right information. So as we said at the start, this presentation is going to focus primarily on weight management. And for me, as a naval architect, weight management is a very critical task. Uh, for example, I mean, the whole objective when we build the ships is that the first objective is the ship should float, otherwise it's a submarine. Go beyond that, we would want the ship to float upright, because that's the way it should really work. But there are more subtleties beyond that. For example, one of my projects that I was very loosely connected many years ago was a, a ship design that when launched sat on its uh, loaded draft marks. The ship was empty. So although the ship was fairly safe at its launching, the use of perhaps thicker steel highlighted the fact that it could no longer carry the dead weight that it was originally designed for. So as a successful business, it was somewhat compromised. Of course, we can go out onto the internet and find some extreme cases. Um, this is a particularly well-documented case where you can find a video on YouTube. But if you go to the NTSB uh, report, you'll find that 
it highlights that although there wasn't a lack of technical expertise, in fact the, the builder was a very experienced company, they had gone through some hard times which meant people had left and there had been compromised communication between people internally, externally and that resulted in this situation here. Some mistakes were made, primarily human mistakes. Consequences of this is that we went from a, a project that was worth around $10 million to something that ultimately resulted in the bankruptcy of the company and perhaps that happened over a period of 20 minutes. Digging deeper into the types of weight involved in the project and I'm now starting to think about who or the processes involved we would see once we look at the stakeholders that we have designers uh, they're often authoring a lot of the information. A lot of that information is virtual, so they don't necessarily have a, a physical feel for a lot of the, the weight that they're creating. The fabricators, on the other hand, do have to deal with the physical implications of weight. They have to make sure that they have the lifting capacity, and they have to also consider any of the, the implications of the manual handling. On large projects, we're probably going to use a weight engineer. This can be quite a challenging job because they have to make sure that they get all of the output information from the designer on the weights and make sure that it's collated and up to date and uh, accurate for what the fabricator is going to use within that, that uh, point of view. Also make sure that we have the correct information for our stability and the hydrostatics. At the other end of the spectrum you might have the bid team who will perhaps in the course of doing a um, an initial or conceptual design look at the weight uh, try and forecast the weight of the ultimate vessel that they're creating so they will probably be dealing with a very coarse granularity ultimately they might use that information to generate cost so we have a lot of differences between each of the ways that the stock stakeholders deal with weight they use different processes the designer is ultimately creating weight the bid team is is doing so but in a very short-term capacity and in that respect, there's also a difference in granularities. The bid team are perhaps dealing with a very coarse breakdown of weight. The weight engineer might have a very extensive data set to work with. Of course, that leads into them having different life cycles. The bid team is going to be developing weight over perhaps a, a few weeks. The project, uh, the designers, the weight engineer may be working with weight on a single project for many months or a year. And at the same time when it gets to the operator um, they might be working with weight for a number of decades so each of these stakeholders have a number of uh, different objectives and each of those may be supported by Aviva Engineering. So what we're going to do with this presentation is set up four different approaches to the weight management. We're going to build to a much more powerful, powerful concept but I want to start with something really simple to begin with. So a simple solution is going to be a building block for our other examples as we go through. We're going to build a very simple, I suppose you could say, spreadsheet to capture weight. Ultimately, each row in our spreadsheet will be a weight item. We'll represent it in this form here. Uh, we'll make a, an element, and that element will have a number of attributes. It will, of course, have the weight, the three components of the central gravity, and we'll throw in a text description as well. So to put this all together, I have three actions to perform. I have to create the new weight element in Lexicon, then define and assign the attributes to that weight element, and then publish a view of that data to engineering so it can be used within the system. As a preview, this is the model that we'll be working with. We'll not see this model again, but it will be stored in the databases in the background to what we're using. It's not a, a, a detailed model, but it has quite a lot of information inside it. Here we can see the uh, machinery spaces and then the cargo spaces. And we have a reasonable amount of information in there to work with and to populate the, the databases that we'll be currently creating in Aviva Engineering. So here I am in the Aviva Engineering application. I'm presently in a, an empty working area. I have absolutely no data in the engineering world whatsoever. Of course, as I said there, we have the 3D 
uh, data in the background but it's not presently visible directly in what I'm seeing right now so I'm going to have to manufacture everything that I want to see in Aviva Engineering. Um, I'm going to do that using some scripts mainly to avoid a lot of typing um, and we'll need to be doing most of the definition in the lexicon world and this is the lexicon application. So what I'll be doing is building up some worlds and building up some elements within here. So to start with I'll need some initial storage areas. So what I've created is a storage area to store my weight elements, to store my weight attributes and to store my weight views. Later on I'll be making up a product breakdown structure for my one of my definitions that I need. So to start with we're going to make a very simple weight estimate element. Creating an element is very straightforward. We just create a use define element and populate the information in there. But I'm going to use some scripts to make this simpler and make sure I get everything right. So little scripts that I'm using are very simple and we, be, we will be using these like this throughout the, uh, the presentation. So we'll create a, an element and this is an estimated weight element. It called, it's called SW item and we can see that it's been derived from an engineering item so it's a bit of a class structure and upon that I'll create some attributes you can see in this area here I've created a weight and my three components for my center of gravity now you'll see that as I've created these attributes they're associated with the estimated weight item uh, this is their physical name so we have center of gravity in Z uh, we have given this a real type and it happens to have a unit of length. The weight would have a unit of mass and that's pretty much it. That's all I need to do to create a, a weight element with three attributes and we'll save that. Then to allow this to be displayed in engineering I need to create a view. Basically what the view does is tell engineering how to display this data. It makes a selection effectively. So what I'll do is I'll bring in a script to do that. You'll see that basically I'm creating a, a weight item and then I'm defining my attributes that I'm going to use. It's a collection process. Uh, I'll then show the database views editor that we normally use to design this. So here we have a weight estimate view. We're taking this from estimated weight item and we're defining some columns so I could add more columns or take them away here and it's giving me a little preview of what I'm going to see in Aviva Engineering. So now in Aviva Engineering I need to define a storage area so that I can store this data. Firstly I'll do a get work so that it knows about those items that I just created in Lexicon and now I have my estimated weight so this is an area where we can physically store the definition of data that I made in Lexicon. So now I can bring in a view. So I want to add a list. We can see my weight estimate is there. So I will call it estimated weight. I can choose the fields that I'm going to see. I can rename them. I can give this a little bit of an organization so if I choose to add a group I could add say center of gravity and then I could populate those items in there so we see a nice breakdown of information. Okay. So now in this view in here we can open that up and we have a table that we can work with. You notice that my units have transferred through uh, I can use perhaps the rulers to change the units I'm working in and now I can go ahead and make information so if I want to make uh, so some item I can give it a weight of say a ton put it at 10 meters forward on the center line and 3 meters up so this is now stored in the database whenever I save it um, it's accessible to anybody who has access to this database and anybody around the world. Now I can do a few more things with this. I can bring data in from other areas. So for example, we could import some Excel information. 
uh, let's have a look in here. So this is just a, a simple spreadsheet. Uh, we'll create this from scratch. So I'm going to take my sheet one from that that Excel spreadsheet and populate my populate my estimated weight items. And now I need to do some mapping. So I'll map my name to the description. We can take the owner across. We'll map the gross weight to weight. And there's one there that hasn't cho chosen correctly. So I'm just mapping the columns from my spreadsheet. We'll have a look at the spreadsheet itself. So it's simply a, a simple chart that specifies the name, the owner location, and the three parameters, four parameters that we're interested in. So we go next. We have the opportunity to save it. So it's importing in. We can see all of the data there. We can get a more detailed view of the data that is brought in. But if I click accept all, then it imports the data in from another data source. And we could save that. Um, okay, so it's still a simple table. If we wanted to do some analysis, we could get, for example, column summaries. So if we want a summary of the weight, we can get a value down there. It doesn't, Aviva Engineering doesn't know about moments, so we, we can't get center of gravity from within the, the basic application, but there's no reason why I couldn't create a, a simple form here where we could change some information. So if I want to take that and make it 10 tons, for example, and we do an update, we can get the results there. You can get this form to do automatic updates as you change values, but you need to be aware that that then becomes an overhead every time values change in the sheet. So perhaps this is a more efficient way just to have an update button. So looking at this, this solution isn't too different from a, a simple spreadsheet. Um, it takes a little bit longer to set up, a few more minutes perhaps, uh, but it's got a much more powerful capability. Because it's stored in the database, it can be populated by many different people, perhaps at the same time, but it can be then shared within the organization and distributed using Global between many different offices. So let's move on to something a little bit more complicated, a much more detailed solution. And here we're going to be exposing weight from the 3D design into Aviva Engineering. At this case, we're not necessarily interested in how we're going to interact with the information. What I want to do in this section is talk much more about how weight is calculated in the Aviva products. So we're going to have a look at weight in 3D. We're going to have a look at the different calculation concepts of weight, different types of weight, and how weight is physically generated, uh, how it's generated from the catalog and from other reference information. So let's start first with the, the gross and net weight concepts, and there is also a rough weight concept as well. So pretty much every 3D item has a set of attributes called G way and G C of G, which represent the weight and the central gravity. The gross weight concept represents the weight of raw items without any machining. So it excludes holes and any cutouts and cutbacks and things like that. It's just the four, you could say the raw material weight. The other end of the scale, we have the net weight. This is the weight of the item accounting for holes. It's represented by the attributes N way and N C of G. You could say that the net weight perhaps takes a little bit longer to calculate it than the gross weight. And that perhaps was also the original reasoning behind the other attribute, which I have not included here, the, the rough weight, which is probably much quicker to calculate. These days, there's probably not much difference in the, these two attributes for calculation speed because we have much faster uh, computers than when these were originally introduced. It's worth mentioning at this stage that for hull elements, the gross weight, the net weight, aren't any going to be any different for hull, hull elements um, it's, uh, it, this concept doesn't necessarily translate to them and all these attributes will return the same values. Moving on, we now have a look at the dry and wet weight concepts. So for an equipment, you have um, a user defined value for their user weight, but you also have a user wet weight as well. And there's a central gravity for both of those attributes as well. These can be manually defined 
and will also be defined at template level. <clears throat> Pipes can have their wet weight calculated numerically. Uh, you'll see on the pipe here we have a fluid reference, it's referencing hydraulic oil, and this will take the volume, the internal volume of the pipe, and turn that into a weight, and we'll get the corresponding center of gravity as well. To evaluate the wet weight, you will find that there's an additional argument that can be put onto the, the gross weight and the net weight attributes. Uh, in brackets, we include the words dry or wet to calculate these two different factors. And we can use these kind of extensions to these attributes throughout the software when we, when we want to query weight. Now looking at how weight is physically captured within the, the background information. So for equipment, as we saw earlier, we add this weight explicitly. This can be done on a per item basis in the design front end, or it can be done in the catalog for templates and other information. If you override the actual instance equipment and put the weight there, it will override any information from the template itself. You'll notice that the brackets around the definition of the user weight denote that this is a calculation, an evaluation, rather than just a, a simple numerical definition. So if you wanted to, you could put in a calculation there that could be linked back to the size of the equipment or any other items that you could reference within that, that physical definition. For pipes, ventilation and cable, the definition of weight is much more complicated. Everything is specification driven. So everything is defined in quite a lot of detail because these individual items are put together using many different components and parts. At a basic level, we assemble components. There's the tube definition and the component definition. The tube definition uh, specifies weight per unit length and the component definition specifies weight per item. Alongside that, as we highlighted in the previous section, we have the fluid definition. But you can add things on top, such as insulation, and that will, in addition, put weight onto our piping. So you can see that because the, the way that we assemble these items, it can be, can be quite complicated to identify how the weight is being calculated. And you need to have a good catalog system to ensure that each of the components you're using has the quite right weight associated with them. You could have used, of course, use Aviva Engineering to manage this process and go in and use Aviva Engineering to extract this weight information and allow you to define that and manage it. Further items of weight definition, we have the, the structure. This is simply using the material reference and the volume of the steel structure or any other material to get the weight out that way. Similarly for hull, it's done in the same way, except that it's termed the quality code or quality text but behind the, same, behind the scenes, it's exactly the same mechanism, it's exactly the same objects, the materials, material references, as, um, as it is for the outfit structure. It's worth mentioning that much like the concept of the gross weight and the net weight, hull has the similar concepts, but these are not readily accessible. You can use one or the other. In the default files, you can specify the weight is the materials that are uncut, or that they're the cut up or modeled items. It's been like this for a long time and uh, long-term customers are used to using this way, but perhaps if weight became a little bit more of an effective item, we'd perhaps adapt to the, the method used in, in, in the uh, PDMS style tools. So with this background, what we're going to do now is go to our 3D database and bring in our design items and calculate weight directly, displaying that in Aviva Engineering. So in this section, effectively what we're going to do is rather than create a data set inside engineering itself, we're going to visualize date, the data set from the 3D world. Now unlike the previous section, all I need is the database view itself, and I can go and create that in Lexicon. So I'll go to Lexicon here, and effectively we're going to build a database view So all I need is this definition here. Uh, and you can see the information that we're bringing in is quite simple. We create a view, but the key pieces of inf information that I'm interested in is my gross weight dry, 
my gross weight wet, and my three components of the center of gravity. So we'll bring that in, and we can see that we got a, a database view here. Here you can see that information coming up, my dry, wet, and my three components of center of gravity. That's said. So we'll do a save work, and we'll go back to Aviva Engineering and generate a new view. So we'll add a list, and we'll have a look at the weight 3D. And of course, I need to make sure I do a get work first. There we go. So we have our weight 3D. Uh, we have each of our fields, so we could just simply call this dry, wet, and into our layout, go and organize the information in the same way. So we can organize things around. So let's put a group in there. Let's add a center of gravity. Bring in our wet and our dry weights and our three components. There we go. So I'll now open that section up. And this is going to take some time. So you can see in the list here after a few moments that we've got the weight of every item in our database. At the screen, bottom of the screen, you can see we have a total of 1,700 or so records. We can see all the weights of the items, but you will have noticed that it took quite a bit of time to, to generate that data. That's because for every time it wants to display these attributes, it has to do a calculation. There's nothing that can be done about that. It's just the way it works. So this illustrates how the weight can be presented in Aviva Engineering, but as a, as a practical tool, this isn't particularly efficient because it has to take time to generate this. And I'm not going to even scroll the screen because it, it does take a, a bit of time to update that information. So we'll just close that off. So some comments. Well, we can see that the information is easily accessible. We just access 3D and brought in a table of information directly. It was all read-only because it's all defined in 3D. But you would have also seen that the, the weight use of the weight attributes, the pseudo attributes, has an overhead. Pseudo attributes are generally calculated. And every time we want to access a piece of information, this calculation has to be performed. You'll note that I'm using the 12.1 the version of the software. Um, there are slight improvements in the 14 series, um, but because this information has to be calculated, then there is always going to be an overhead. So in the next section, I'm going to improve this performance. But you know, for raw access and having to deal with calculated attributes, which in general Aviva Engineering was never designed to handle, it's always going to be a bit of a challenge. So let's now look towards using a much more practical solution for weight control. And this is when we start to put in some sensible requirements. How do we represent weight that isn't in 3D? What if we don't want to work with live changes, as in the previous section, because we're reading from the database directly? Uh, if there are changes and we do a get work, then those changes are going to influence our results as we're working. What if we want to give the weight breakdown some structure, such as a traditional work, work breakdown structure? What if we want to see changes? Well, that's a system already available in, in, in Aviva Engineering that we can see the history, uh, we can see when changes have been, been made. And how can we understand what has changed recently? Well, we have our compare and update tools, we can look at our data set that we have, we're in control of, and we compare that with the, the 3D world to see things are changing. And if we see that there is something that we should go and update, then we can take that option as an extension. So going into more detail, we'll look at introducing a weight breakdown structure. We could do this in two ways. We could do a really simple version where we just create a user-defined attribute that has a particular set of values to it. And these values could be added by text. 
uh, when you have a look at this in Aviva Engineering, you see that you also get the opportunity to add, add a description, which is a possibility of giving, giving more information. The challenge with this one is that it's very good for a low number of items. But often we're coming across weight breakdown structures that are much more detailed. A particular example would be something like Swibis, which has quite extensive definition and documentation. This is done for uh, military uh, level projects, and you can see that we have quite a lot of numbers and descriptions and specific details. Rather than use a user to find attribute directly, we could define this in exactly the same way that we did the estimated weight in the simple first section. We could put all those items into a spreadsheet, as we see here. We could import them into a table in Aviva Engineering, use them as a reference tool for our weight items, and with the PBS Explorer, we can also redefine the hierarchical structure so we can get more sensible information out of our system. In addition to a weight breakdown structure, there's no reason why we couldn't break down the weight model spatially. We could take advantage of space management, where we can break the model down, say, by compartment, or many other mechanisms. Why not use a, an external box? and break it down by deck. Then we have some powerful queries. We can do queries in two different ways. We can collect all the items within a volume, as this uh, query denotes here. Basically it says collect all equipment within volume and the volume name. Alternatively, we could collect the space for a particular point in space. We can use the SPM SFP uh, pseudo attribute and that takes an argument which is a point in this case it's going to be the net weight center of gravity and if we apply that query to a particular space arrangement then we can find the space within that location which that center of gravity resides in so that's a nice way of getting the the point inside our model where all our weight is is located and then because we'll be creating an independent data set we'll need to get weight in from the 3D model. And this is where the compare and update tool comes in really helpful. It is basically a pool mechanism where we can go to the 3D model and when we choose, we can go and ask for updates and changes to the information inside that model itself. So as a weight control solution, what we're going to build up is we'll make, make a new weight element, something that's detailed, in addition to the information that we had in our simple system, we'll have a parameter for the wet weight, we'll have parameters for the simple work breakdown structure, the complicated weight breakdown structure, we'll have um, a, re a reference panel for its location, its compartment, and also for its deck. We'll introduce the weight breakdown structure, we'll expose the spatial breakdown structure attributes, will define the much more complicated work breakdown structure where we use a table in, in Aviva Engineering to capture this information. And then we'll collect the weight from 3D using compare and update. And using that, we'll review and look at the reporting opportunities of our data. So in this third section, we, what we want to do is extend the idea that we did in the first section of capturing the data, but combine that with what we presented in the second section to bring in weight information from 3D. So ultimately what we're going to do is build a much more detailed data set than what we did in the first section and we'll go back to Lexicon to build that up. So here we are in Lexicon and I'll go and get the scripts I'm using for this. So we're going to build a simple weight item and you can see that this sits alongside the estimated weight time weight item defined in exactly the same way uh, and then we'll add some attributes so we're first of all we're going to make the simple weight breakdown structure attribute and there we can see it here so this is a text based attribute and we can see that here it has some some valid values that we just set up so it's a, it's a low number of values really and what we do we we'll, we'll just stick that on the weight item there uh, we're also going to build up the detailed Swibis breakdown structure. 
This is a much more detailed definition here, but in this script, I'm not only creating the element, I'm creating the attributes and the view all in one go. So we see there we have a, a view, and that view is simply going to consist of a database name, its number, a detailed description, and the owning element of that row number. Uh, and we have just created a, a number attribute and the SWS element. So now we will embellish the weight item itself. We'll give it its some, some particular unique attributes that we want. So here we can see that the unique attributes that we've added is a wet weight, uh, a reference attribute to the SWS definition, SWBS definition. We have an attribute for a deck, and this connects to a space management space, and similarly for the space management location. For the other attributes, the dry weight and the central gravity will reuse the attributes that we put onto the original weight estimate. So for the normal weight you can see here we're identifying that at that attribute appears on the estimated weight and the weight item and similarly for the centers of gravity. So we'll do a save work and to finish off we'll need a view. So here we have a control weight view and here you can see in this column, this will mean that our table consists of a name and description. We have the two weight breakdown structures, de com simple and detailed. We have our two locations of where that weight is within the spatial breakdown structure. We have an attribute that tells us what type of weight. So this will tell us whether it's a panel or a piece of equipment. And then we have our dry weight, our wet weight, and our three centers of gravity. So we'll do a save work on that and go into engineering. So within here we'll need a storage location as we do for all these things. And we need to drag that down the bottom. Okay, so now we have a location to store our SWS, SWBS definition and our weight control. So to start with, we'll bring in our detailed weight breakdown structure. And we'll do this in the same way that we brought the weight in at the beginning. We'll um, go and import an Excel spreadsheet. Let's go and build up the view first. Let's make sure we do a get work. Uh, there we go. So we have a, a definition itself. There are my fields and I'm not going to do anything more than that. So we'll go to here and open that one up as a new table. We'll bring in an Excel definition of those. Itself. Here I'm using a, an already stored configuration uh, and this means that everything is already mapped. I just need to run through it. It's something that I've made previously. So it will run in, we're bringing in 300 or so elements. And it looks like a table like this. We can see that we've got identifiers and then the description shows us what those items are related to. Now I could present this information in the product breakdown structure. For that, I need a few more definitions in lexicon. So I'm gonna populate this area up here. So again, this is a, a fairly small piece of definition that just gives us some rules about how to build the hierarchy. In this area, the effective uh, statements are is that I want to collect all SWS, SWBS items that have the top level owner. And then I want to collect all the elements that have the owners identified in the previous section. And then all I'm doing is assembling a name. So we'll just drag that one in. So this creates us three elements, effectively the different levels of the hierarchy, the top level, the bit that collects the top level owners, and then the ones that collect the next level down. So if I do a save work, go back into engineering and do a get work. If I now manage show the PBS Explorer, you can see that for my whole structure, 
I've collected my top level owners you can see here this defines the owner and then all the hundred series below that are sitting below that owner so I build up the rules that way so this is a structure that you can build yourselves it doesn't have to be for just engineering data it can be any data and it just builds a useful hierarchy okay right now we will bring in the remaining definition for our weights. So if we then have our weight control, we'll have a look at our fields. So we'll have our dry, wet, x, y, and z. So we're just updating the names and then we'll put together the layout. I'll change that, we'll just call that one type. Again, we'll add a center of gravity. There we go. So we'll leave that one out. Okay. So if we open this one up. We see we got items here. We can create new weights in here. So I have some weight. This is completely independent of of the three D model, but it's capturable. I can put this in a particular weight breakdown structure. I could allocate it to my much more complicated structure. Um, if I put my mouse cursor over it, it does actually bring up the description. I could put the description in the name, but this is a something that I would need a little bit of adaption of the form to make it perfect. We could choose a, a deck. So if we look in our decks, we could put this on the double bottom, and we could put this perhaps in the thruster area, propulsion room, I can build up quite a detailed data set in this way. Of course, I also want to collect my information from the 3D. So with that, I can use the compare and update information. So here I'm using compare and update, I'm accessing it. I think we can get rid of that one. So here lists data sources. So I'm going to get my information from design, and I've already set up some rules for outfit structure. So as soon as I select that, it's going to the 3D world and seeing what elements I have in my list here and what elements are in the 3D world, in the 3D world seeing this, if there's any matchup. If there is, it's looking at comparisons. Because my data set is empty, then it, everything in 3D is going to be new. So you can see a list here, and it's finding lots and lots of matched elements. Let's just check whether my configuration is set up. Not that one, it's that one. So this is something that should be set up beforehand. It only needs to be done once. Uh, it's just going to manage the, the links between engineering and 3D. And then once that's done, we can bring it all in. So here we're going to make sure that we're storing our data in the right place. It's in the weight control group. And then we just run update. So now it's building my list up, bringing together the, the weight and central gravities. I can extend the compare and update to automatically allocate the location and deck, but it's not something that I've done in this case. Uh, it's something that I could do from a, a macro. So if I bring up my command window, it's something that you can allocate rule based. So let's see here, you can see some of the queries that I made earlier, find the, using the center of gravity, find me the space in space one, the same idea, find me the space within the decks arrangement. We'll just let that run a second. So there, all of those have been allocated by a simple macro type rule. 
Uh, similarly, I could now start to integrate my other items. So this one would be probably something from a 200 maybe. We'll guess at that one. I've, I've, I've put that one in the nuclear power area. So as a weight, weight control tool, this is something that is now powerful. It collects not only my 3D weight, but also additional weight items. And what we're going to do is switch to a more detailed view of this data. So after some time, we can build up a much more detailed list. It takes a while to process all the information that we have. Um, and we can see in this list we have a total of 1,190 items. Um, now that this data isn't being calculated, we can see that we can browse that data quite quickly. Um, we have the opportunity to change our units, so we can work if we wanted to in tons, in meters, just depends on what our preferences are. Um, we can get some summaries, so if we wanted to have the total weights, we would get them like that. So you can see our summaries down the bottom there, we'll expand that one out a bit. Uh, we can also start to break down the information to see what's going on. So for example, if we want to do some grouping, if we want to group by type, we can see that we have at present 142 tons of equipment, 9 tons of pipe, and 1,342 tons of hull panels, planar panels. If we want to break down by deck, for example, we put that up there, and we can see that we've got 120 tons or so on the bridge, and 240 tons or so in the double bottom. We could break it down further. Uh, if we wanted to add a location on top of that, so if we see by deck, if we go to the bridge for example, we can see the breakdown of having 50 tons of hull panels on the bridge deck. So it's a good little reviewing tool. Again, as I highlighted earlier, as it's not really set up for calculating weight, then if we want to do some proper weight analysis, then we need to bring in a tool that does some calculation of our weight moments. So we could, for example, as we see here, we've got the difference between the dry weight, the wet weight, and the centroid. If we jump, want that for a, a particular deck, so again, we'll go for the bridge deck. You can see here, we can get the analysis. We could go down even further, just the hull panels. We're just getting 50 or 7 tons or so of hull panels within the bridge deck and the centroid of that. So doing the analysis using a macro is again quite straightforward, it's just the calculations that we, we would have learned at university. So looking at the benefits of that system, well we've taken control of our weight, we own the data set, we have complete control of when it's updated, uh, we can use the um, access control allowing people to modify it or just read it. We can do many th different things. Fundamentally, we can add or change that data if we choose. We can add items that are not in 3D and we can manage that. Once we've got the data in there, we can use the tool to review our data, break it down into different sets to try and understand what's going on. We could then perform some further analysis on it. I could, for example, include the X extents of the weights that would give me the opportunity to look at weight distribution something that I could generate with a PML macro and it begins to help us make some do some basic decision making using this data however thinking about the whole design life cycle it's more that section is more of a, a simple weight control solution the original requirements that I started with for this project was to have something that would allow me to work through the entire project evolving as the information changed. So I wanted to come up originally with a much more powerful solution. And I can't say I have a, 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 a perfect solution, I've got an idea here. Um, so you know, maybe there's some comments that would, would help out with this, but this is what I've got today.
And this is also the idea that I'm thinking about and trying to represent it. So this is the design life cycle of our ship. We have time going left and our known weight going up on the long y-axis. The weight control solution presented in the previous section would be effectively here. It's today we have a certain granularity, a certain level of knowledge. I also have a limited amount of history going backwards. As far as the project is concerned, this is where I want to get to. This is my delivery. Uh, I'm aiming as a target to, to head for that option. So over the progress of the project, my weight's going to build up in some shape, some form, until we get there. At the beginning, I started with an estimate. This was a much smaller data set. It was much coarser in terms of granularity, but it does define what we thought the ship would weigh when we started the project, what its stability would be. So ultimately, it defines the limit of where I'm heading. If my limit changes in my delivery, then it's going to throw out my initial estimate and all the costs and etc. that I made for my original project. So as I'm moving forward, I want a way to kind of reference my information that I have back to my initial estimate. And I guess the way that I thought of doing that could be considered to be very similar to the, the breakdown structures we used in the similar in the previous section. So what I wanted to do was reference back the weight I have today, my detailed weight, back to my initial estimate. So my initial estimate that I have for this project was something that I created a long time ago. In initial design I have my prediction of my lightweight distribution and I've had stability and loading conditions for some time and I'm fairly happy that these loading conditions are you know, they're a good estimate, maybe not perfect, but, but they're, not, they're not wildly inaccurate. So what I want to do is reference my detailed weights back to my original estimate as the first task. Then what I'm going to do is compare my calculated weights against my estimate. This tells me if I'm broke, if I'm really going in the right direction, but with more, uh, more granularity than just a, a, an output, a single value of weight. To make a simple comparison, I'm just going to look at the percentage between the two and see what information that gives us. Beyond that simple demo, we'll have a little discussion about uncertainty and whether we can use maturity information to support some level of uncertainty. So in this final section, I want to extend what I've created in the previous three so that I can understand how my current weight control data set relates to my original estimate um, back in the beginning. So in this project, if I open my estimated weight up, you can see that I've populated this data from my initial design data set. So basically what I want to do is kind of place each of the weights in this data set here with respect to these items here. Easiest way to do that is just to create a reference attribute and start to collect them together. So uh, what I'm going to do is then also extend this so that not only am I seeing my estimated weight, but I'm also seeing the equivalent of my calculated weight. So I need to extend both the data sets for my estimated weight and also my weight control. And I'll be doing this while these data sets are active in engineering. So back in Lexicon, we have, as before, all of our views. And what I'm going to do is extend my estimated weight adding in four parameters for weight from the database and the three centers of gravity. So in engineering, if I get my work here, you can see that I have these four calculated fields will now appear. I'll go and tidy them up. Uh, so we can see something nice and simple. So we'll have uh, a layout. So what we can do here is add a group for and we'll put in our center of gravity and our weight there. Then we'll make a group here for calculated. We'll add a group for center of gravity. And that 
C, uh, so we'll have weight. Okay, so there is our information there. And we can see our view, we have both our estimated and calculated views. So to get a connection on our weight control, I'll need to add a column here where we can connect things up, a reference column. So we'll need to extend that weight item with some more attributes. And you see here we have the estimated reference and this is a element uh, an attribute on a weight item which refers to our estimated weight item. Let's see what else I've got. Okay. So back in here, if I do a get work, we now see that we have that estimated reference. So if I, for example, decide to I mean, connect this up, these are deck items, we can associate this with deck structure. It creates a reference and in here we won't see anything yet but if I decide to add items onto my sorted weight let's go to properties we'll add a sublist you can now see that when I connect onto the deck structure you can see that that one is accumulated it know that it knows that it's connected now I've got a quite a task here to populate all these 1,000 or so items. Um, I don't necessarily need to do it by hand. If you were doing this project for real, then these items are going to accumulate at a much slower rate than I'm doing here. But I could write some simple rules to populate this data. Uh, we can see in this one here, I'm using to start with my naming conventions. So I'm saying everything that has FR in the name will make that a part of the transverse structure. Uh, because my naming controller's got a, gone a little bit complicated here for my longitudinal structure, I have quite a few different formats. And we might not only use name, but we could use, for example, something that is um, by type. And let's see down here. Uh, here we're using the location, so if the location is the lower engine room deck, then we're putting it in machinery spaces. We're just using the configuration, the topology of the information, just to populate the right information. So we'll run that macro, just to give me an, an initial setup. And it will run through. We should have a few gaps that we need to fill. go. So everything populated or is it? Well we can use Aviva Engineering to check. If we just want to look at the blank items, oh, we see we've got two there. We can populate those. These are going to be longitudinal structure. I mean we can even do a copy and paste like so. So now when we go to our estimated weight and we look at these bigger items we now see that we have a, a fully populated list. Again, I want to see in these calculated fields the accumulation of all this data. So if I was to have a look at my column summaries and get a sum of that data, let's go for cargo space, I want to see this data ending up in here. Well again, it's not a function directly of Aviva Engineering, but I can compare the two. I can put the calculation in, so if I run that there now, it's done a little analysis. Again, you can see pretty much the format of a moment-based calculation. It's summed up those fields using the references and put all that data in there. That's great. We can't see so well the, the fields. Let's have a look at tons. Here we see we've got 250 tons versus 10 tons. We've not really got a feel for it, but maybe there's some, some more analysis that we could do. So why not add just a simple percentage difference? Let's go to um, Lexicon. 
let's go to our estimated weight view and add that one in so in our columns let's have a new column and let's take the DB weight or we would if it's the right view it's got to be that one there divided by our weight times 100 call that one percentage difference so it's just a simple calculation so we'll save that let's make sure it is saved go back to tags get that one in and now we can see those percentages here so now we have some guidance for our process we can see that for our cargo spaces we're seriously under capturing our information but for our structural area say for outfit we've got so far 172 percent of our original estimate so we have to question whether our original estimate was correct so this even at a simple level gives us some really good decision support information for our whole process and if you consider that this uh, engineering information could be active from the beginning to the end then it's got information that can drive the decision processes or understand whether your project is going to be kept on track so that section was quite interesting um, it was a very simple calculation many customers are wanting to capture a level of uncertainty within their calculations itself. I can't say that that's an easy process. Uh, for a start, I think most customers might take the easy option, which is to work with a simple percentage parameter. There are some more complicated options out there, and I've worked with these in cost situations. We're using statistical, simple statistical distributions, and then running Monte Carlo simulations to understand the uncertainty as a whole. While these are both fairly good models, if you don't have the information to populate them, then the output of that calculation can't be considered to be particularly reliable. But perhaps there's another way that we could look at this, um, because with Aviva Engineering, you have a lot of access to other, other information in the project that supports the level of maturity or other information in that. So I thought about, well, maybe an option is to use status control. Um, because status control ultimately does represent the uncertainty in our project, but we might be using many different levels of status control. So it could be accumulated together um, as a measure of uncertainty. So examples that I'm thinking about is perhaps when you start the project and you represent a piece of equipment. Well, in general, you have a very big uncertainty. Um, it's in a very initial design stage. If you then select a piece of equipment and go out to the manufacturer with for further information, then the uncertainty on that's going to be reduced because you've pretty much settled on a physical size. Then once you get a little bit further, the weights are confirmed by the manufacturer and also the weights of all the supporting equipment and piping are also defined in that process. So as you go through this maturity stage and things become approved, then ultimately you are going a process, going through a process where you're de-risking and ultimately reducing uncertainty in a very controlled fashion. And I think this would be a very interesting uh, little project to see whether this worked in reality. Unfortunately, I haven't had the opportunity to find anyone who I could test this with. So we'll draw the presentation to a close and summarize what we've seen. So even though I've used weight management as a, an example, uh, it can be applied in many different scenarios as I presented at the start. I think the user interface, the table, and the, the data in the, stored in the database, the global aspect, gives you a lot of opportunities for just maintaining your data and, and thinking about new ways that you can use your data that you have, giving that to different stakeholders within your business. So in that respect, once you've collected the data, you have a lot of powerful review opportunities. You can see what's going on. But I think the real benefit comes is when you start to incorporate the tool into a particular process. Weight is a good example of something that has to be managed to ensure that you reach a target where the ship is functional. And because you are managing that data, then ultimately it supports decision making. And there's a lot of opportunities which you shouldn't get from Aviva Engineering in that respect. So 
as I said, I think the overall message of this is that Aviva Engineering is, is a massive opportunity to in innovate the use of the data that you collect within your businesses. Thank you very much.